Hello, my name is Shivdath, and today we're going to look at a very interesting, um, very interesting topic in math. What do you think is the most beautiful math equation? What's the most beautiful math equation you've seen? Um, maybe a squared plus b squared equals c squared, Pythagorean triplets. Think about it. Anyway, so mathematicians around the world will ask this question, why do you conduct a survey? And um, I think a resounding, a resounding majority of them came up with the following equation. If, uh, if you want some more time to think, that would be a great time to pause the video. I'm about to write it down on the board. e to the i pi plus 1 equal to 0. Now just why is this so beautiful? Feel free to pause the video and stare at it for a bit. And you'll try and come up with uh, reasons why it might, might be so, um, so enticing. Alright, so basically the reason is um, why it's so beautiful is that it kind of really encompasses the essential nuggets, the essential, the essence of math, the very foundations that math is built on. Let me show you how. Basically, in math you have operations, right? You have plus and you have minus, which are really equivalent operations. You can, uh, subtracting is just adding the negative number. You have multiplication and you have a division, which are again really equivalent operations. Division is multiplying by one divided by the number. You have both these, these basic operations in there. You have the plus here. You have the multiplication here, i into 5. And, and, um, and that gives you subtraction and division as well, because like I said, they're basically the same thing. So you have the main mathematical operators. You have the main math identities. One is the multiplicative identity. In other words, a times 1 is equal to 1. Any number times 1 is itself. So it's a multiplicative identity. You also have the additive identity. In other words, 0. Because a plus 0 equal to a. Any number plus 0 equals itself. You have equals to, which basically gives you equations. And math is full of equations. You know, you're equating to quantities. You equate to quantities and solve that to get a result. Uh, equations just pop up everywhere in math. Without equations, there wouldn't be math. And finally, you have the fundamental constants of math, which show up all the time everywhere. E, Euler's constant, which is has value 2.17 something. I forget. I, the imaginary number, which you know takes us into a whole different realm of mathematics, complex analysis, which is based on that complex plane, you know, entirely derives from I. And it's amazing how you know normal calculus lends itself so, so easily and how it's so similar and yet so different when one studies complex analysis. And finally, pi, which we see all the time, which comes from a circle, as you know, um, this conference is 2 pi r. So, um, circumference by 2 pi, 2 r, or circumference by the diameter is a constant for a circle, which is pi. And this shows up, um, you know, all the time in trigonometry everywhere. Uh, you know, whatever field of math they deal with, number theory, uh, differential geometry, it just comes up everywhere. So really, this simple equation um, really, you know, contains the, the meat of math, the, uh, the very, very basic foundations that are used and from which, you know, amazing complexity emerges, which is why it's just so beautiful. But before ending, let me just, uh, let's just look at why this is true. Like, why does this make sense? Um, you know, why, how can you have e to the i pi? Doesn't, isn't it a little, um, isn't it, how, how do we get that? And, and what's amazing is kind of you can put these constants in such a beautiful way and they so harmoniously equal uh, integer value, which is truly really amazing. You know, these are very, uh, they're transcendental constants, they're non-recurring, non-repeating decimals, 
it's, it's almost amazing that you put them together in some combination, some combination of mathematical operations, and you get an integer. But anyways, let's see why this is true. I'm going to erase these, so I hope you've had a good chance to normalize them. Alright, so there's an identity, Euler's identity, that e to the i theta is equal to cos theta plus i sine theta. And if you, if somehow you thought the trigonometry was missing from this, well, it really is contained in there because of this relation. You have the cosines, um, cos and sine, and all other trigonometric identities are defined in terms of these. Tan is sine by cos, and and um, and so on. So, um, so there you have trigonometry too. It's just in case you know you thought there was an area map that uh, that wasn't there. But but why is this true? Well, that would take us into another lecture, but. A good way to prove it is using Taylor series. You know, you can expand this into a Taylor series. You can expand this into a Taylor series. And you can expand this into a Taylor series. Like we know e to the x is equal to 1 plus x plus x squared by 2 factorial plus x cubed by 3 factorial and so on. And similarly, when you when you put i theta in there and you expand to the two expansion of sine and cos, um, you can compare both sides and see that they really are equal. So that's one way of, of going through it. It's another, uh, you know, another game to uh, sh show what the Taylor series of these are. Um, and I won't get into that here, but that's a nice, <coughs> uh, that's a very simple way to, way to prove this result. So I hope you enjoy that. Thank you.